Hey guys, Crave here, and uh, just stepping away from the usual game that I play, and this one is about an FPS called Titanfall 2. Now, in a world ruled by Battlefield and Call of Duty, it's really hard to fit in a title like Titanfall, and at the moment, sadly, Titanfall 2 isn't doing too well in terms of units sold or sales, and that is such a shame since the recent iteration is rated fairly well. I mean, it also did well when it was first introduced, uh, I think about two or three years ago or a couple of years ago, and it sold a lot of copies, but the talk and concurrent player numbers fell rather quite quickly. It wasn't rated badly on different platforms either, but it might be possible that the lack of single player campaign contributed to that, or it simply just wasn't the more popular first person shooter. Titanfall 1 had a lot going for it back then, and it has a lot going for it right now. I didn't play the first release, but one thing reviewers agreed on back then was that the gameplay was very smooth and streamlined. Now that is continued in Titanfall 2, and it is the first reason why I think you should check it out. It was my first time playing the game, about, uh, I, I finished Titanfall 2 about a week ago, and I have to say, it doesn't feel daunting, or it didn't feel daunting or strange when you first get your hands on it. And that's coming from someone whose, first, um, whose last first person shooter game was the base game of Battlefield 4. The wall running feature, it doesn't really take any special keystrokes, and it really just flows. On the rare occasion that you make any mistakes in executing or chaining together your wall jumps, it's mainly due to player error, which <laughs> I experienced a whole lot since I have limited FPS experience. Plus, it was my first time with the mechanic, at least to my recollection. If it's your first time seeing the game, what makes Titanfall special is that you not only have the capability to play the standard FPS format, you also have the capability to call in or use your own war machine called a Titan. Now, it makes the game unique in that you don't always have to be in that standard FPS format, although there is a PvP map dedicated to that playtype. The Titans themselves come in different flavors. One can be melee focused, while another can be better suited at long range. While on that subject, the Titan pilot synergy is best showcased in the dedicated single player campaign in Titanfall 2, which was not present in the first game. The campaign shows the importance of being able to understand how to work with your Titan and also work under scenarios where the Titan won't be as effective. So it really just fleshes out how your relationship with your Titan, called BT, evolves and is really just a fun and banter filled ride. My scans detect a functioning uplink targeting module, 428 meters northeast. My analysis indicates a throw is our only option here. I can throw you across the gap. Are you sure about this? There is a 68% chance of success. What about the other 32%? There is a 32% chance of an incomplete traversal resulting in catastrophic trauma, massive internal bleeding, and multiple compound fractures. Dismemberment may also occur. There is also the possibility of electrocution and disintegration within the toxic fog below. Wind, three knots, heading 274. Range, 95 meters. Projectile mass, 89 kilograms. Trust me. The story mode has you acquiring your Titan for the first time and is a typical get to know your war buddy story with a survival element at the very start. Now it goes through a series of missions, which is standard in most FPS, where you take on different enemy pilots and actually introduce you, it actually, the campaign itself actually introduces you to the different Titan types in multiplayer via the Titans used by the enemy pilots. The campaign also has this cool time jump or alternate reality mechanic, which was really cool but not used enough in my opinion. And the lack of use of that mechanic I think also brings me to the negative side of the single player campaign. It's simply too short. You can finish the campaign in maybe, I'm guessing, less than 4 hours and that is frustrating because the journey of your relationship with BT is going really well and then you just realize the game's campaign is pretty much done. Now, in addition to that, the world of Titanfall is really just amazing and it also leaves you I would say intrigued and wanting to know more about the lore in the game, but just like I said, before you even realize it, the game is already done. 
Thankfully, there is the multiplayer option, which is a, well, a standard in most FPS games. But the great thing is that it's not bound by any season pass or similar mechanic, which means you get your DLC maps for free, and that is something that is really, really rare nowadays in the gaming industry. It's unlike other games where a developer or a publisher will sell you a base game that is actually incomplete and ask for more of your money via their DLCs. For Titanfall 2, this also means that your friends, um, in case your friend grabs a copy of Titanfall 2, both of you can play the same content without having to worry whether your buddy has a map that you can't or cannot play on. Overall, it's a game that I definitely would recommend and enjoyed a whole lot even though I do <laughs> get slaughtered a whole lot in the multiplayer matches. I enjoy the single player campaign, the smooth mechanics, the use of titans, and the fun aspect of the multiplayer part of it. It's sad though that um, it's not doing too well sales wise even though it's a very very solid game all throughout. Well, I just wanted to share that insight with you guys or a mini review of Titanfall 2 and I don't know when this video will be published, it might be around Friday or Black Friday sale or um, right after it. But if you do want to go for an FPS or want to try out an FPS, then this is a really solid one to spend your time with. So thanks for checking this out guys, you got Crave here and I'll talk to you soon.